Hello and welcome. I'm Wendy DeRosa, and this episode is Daily Devotional Rituals for Prosperity and Well-Being. I'm so glad you're here, and we're going to dive into this, this uh, topic today, which is inspired by my time in Bali. I just came back from teaching a retreat there. It was actually my first time there, and I can't even believe it was my first time there. I it I was mesmerized, blown away the spiritual experiences that I had um had while I was there have have been they've transformed me. I mean it really was incredible. And it's still integrating on many levels. One of the most profound takeaways of the many takeaways that I've had in in Bali was their commitment and devotion to spirituality in their daily life. And while I was there, I kept feeling like, oh my goodness, you know, this, I'm so glad I'm, I'm witnessing time here because other, you know, other countries don't live like this. The United States isn't like this in that we have such a separation from spirituality in our daily life, unless that's somebody's personal practice or in their community, but it's not collective. You know, we have such a different way here in the States and that to witness this small Island relatively have such incredible prayer and offerings is what they refer to it as the offering. And in fact, that's what Bali, the translation of the word Bali means offering. And so they live very connected to the offering to, I'm going to say the higher power. Now they're Hindu predominantly. There is Muslim and um, Christianity there also, but in terms of this devotional offering creation and, um, and prayer every day, it's to the Hindu gods. Um, so what they would call God is the combination of um, Brahman, Shiva, and Vishnu who make up that um that one consciousness of what we would call god um and it's powerful to be in a space where they honor what they would say the gods from above and the gods from below and what that and they say deity and gods is um kind of a uh, you know it's a charged word in some regards but it's essentially the spirits of the above and the below, meaning we honor that, you know, there is, uh, there are the, the, the divine or the, the deities that we're offering this up to because we have prayer requests, or we're also honoring that, you know, there are, there's a consciousness below us that if we don't acknowledge it, it can take over, it can wreak havoc and it can be called greed and it can be called anger and it can be called rage and it can be called all of these different egoic emotions is as how they, they perceive this. Um, and we have different translations of that in some ways in our own psychology and certainly in our own energy work, et cetera. But the, the profound offerings were incredible. And we I had the opportunity to actually make the offering baskets. So what happens is every day they create out of palm leaves, these little offering baskets, and they're filled with four different, five different colors or colored flowers. Um, and those are, each flower is purposeful, each uh, color is has a purpose and a meaning and then these offering baskets are put in um you know places to offer up to to the spirits to to the divine and however you might translate this for yourself in your own life the concept that i am just profoundly moved by is that we are offering up and honoring, devotionally honoring to, to what is bigger than us, you know, to what I say, the divine realm, and that it becomes a daily ritual committed. And it's not about 
necessarily what I want or need, or gosh, I, sometimes our prayers can come from our own anxiety and that sense that, oh gosh, I, I'm lacking this, or I don't have that, or I wish I could have more of that or whatever it is. It's coming from a really wounded part in us. And this concept is really the understanding that, you know, that we are whole and we are offering up to the, to the divine every single day, whether we need something or not, whether it's, it's gratitude and honor and respect and a bow to life ultimately. And again, the Balinese have very specific who they're praying to and offering to. Um, and there are many ceremonies. There are ceremonies for building a house. There's ceremonies for starting a business. There's ceremonies for getting married for, you know, I mean, we have some of that. We have those ceremonies too, but there's just ceremonies for everything. There's ceremonies in the first year of a baby's life at the four months and at the seven months, and then again at nine months and then at 12 months. So there's these different ceremonies that happen just in that first year of a child's life, of a baby's life. So again, their ceremonies are more um, specific, but what I wanted to bring back, and this is what I've brought back for myself, is this daily devotional ritual for prosperity and well-being. And prosperity can mean money or wealth, or it can mean um, it can mean lots of different things. It also can mean I it means can mean alignment. Like I I am my I want to prosper body, mind, and soul in my life and be prosperous in that and be prosperous in my connection and in my family and my relationships to prosper, to thrive in those areas. So, and that, that's how I'm using the term prosperity and our well being in what that can mean physical health. It can also mean, again, just our inner state, our mental health, our, our, our well being on any level internally. So I've come home with this, this, um, taking my meditation practice to another level, including more devotion and honoring of life and of, I say, God, you know, divinity, grace, you know, the, the spirits on the other side that we don't really see with our physical eyes. We sense, or we, you know, we know on some level maybe it's the ancestors, but that we spend some time in that devotion, devotional place. I actually, because my yoga background, I'm very familiar with the Hindu deities. Um, and I have always had a Lakshmi and a Saraswati and a, and a Ganesh and, you know, a few others in my space because those have had meaning to me and what they mean is that they are aspects that live inside us. They are, con it's consciousness that lives inside the, be the being within us, our soul. And we carry qualities of Lakshmi or Saraswati or, or, or you know, in, in Ganesh, any of the deities, we carry these powers, like the power of prosperity or the power of the, of being creative and artistic and to be an effective communicator essentially. So, so in, in the Hindu or even Balinese culture, these are, these are deities, but from our perspective, they are actually aspects of us that exist. And when we offer up and pray to these powers, to these essence qualities, that exist outside of us and within us, we're actually awakening that consciousness that lives inside us. So my daily ritual has shifted a bit and I started to do a Lakshmi chant and I started to um, bring flowers to my altar, fresh flowers every day to my altar and offer these up in, um, 
in, in a devotional way to freshen, to bring life force to it. And, and I got information back in some ways. I got the information, change your office, clear your space. You're transforming. So your space is transforming. So I've changed my office. I have a new space. It's actually evolving still, but I've done that. And we've done some clearing of energy in other areas of my life. And um, some of that resides within my business and some of it resides within my home life. But the daily ritual that I've been doing consistently is providing more openings for me to have So the daily rituals that I've been doing is providing more of an opportunity for energy to clear in my life and for me to become more aligned. And it feels like um, my pillar is clearing again and I am becoming more centered and aligned and connected. So I'm bringing this forward for you for listening to this because you might have in your life a way in which and I'll say this point blank because I had to do it for myself, a way in which you need to get out, get out of your own way and get out of your own head and reduce making it for you or about you and offering up from that connected and devotional place what it is that you are aligning to. And in some ways it's about building a connection and a relationship in your daily life. So when, if it's God that you connect with, or it's, it's higher love, or it's, you know, whatever angels or whatever feels more in your alignment for you, that you are building that relationship by simply offering. And that offering can be a thank you. It can be a gratitude practice but we can say I'm grateful and I have a gratitude practice, but it's another level to take it to the devotional uh, realm of saying, I am, I am saying I am grateful for all that I've been given and say that in an energetic alignment with yourself and God or the divine and to sit in that. And if you're in a struggle in your business, or you're in a struggle in your family and relationship world, or you're in a struggle in relationship with yourself around clarity or, you know, who you are and why you're here or anything else that you offer that up to, to the divine in your offering. And what could your offering look like? Could it be that you every day sit for five minutes at what I'm calling an altar space, but maybe it's a meditation space. Is there a way that you can sit there and is there a, is there a picture or a, a depiction of what that higher power or prayerful, you know, offering might be? And it could be like you, like a, you know, a picture of of mother Mary, it can be a picture of, um, the sun, you know, it can really be whatever it is that's resonant for you and that you are offering up that gratitude. And I'm offering up my stress and I'm offering up my fear and I'm offering up what I can't see inside myself. That's creating obstacles and stress and negativity or whatever it is, I'm going to breathe into that. I'm going to offer it up and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm releasing this and I'm honoring you universe, God, grace, divinity, angels, spirit guides, love, you know, whatever it might be for you that you create those, those, that daily offering. I really, it's, I mean, it's summertime where I am right now, so I can walk outside and pick flowers from my garden. And we happen to have that. That's not always accessible to everybody, certainly at certain seasons, but, um, but maybe there's something else that you offer up. Maybe it is like, again, a prayer or an intention, or maybe it's writing a word on a piece of paper and putting it in the, on the altar. 
but it's that sense that it's being honored and held by you in this spiritual space and that you are in relationship with spirit in your daily life, that this is what nurtures your heart and your divine alignment and your soul connection. So whatever your daily devotional ritual is, you can start that at any time or continue it if you're doing it and, and offer up, like I said, the gratitude or offer up what is stressing you and also pray for prosperity and well-being. And that prosperity occurs on any level. Again, it can be in your personal life. It can be in your professional life. It can be you know, wherever in just within your own, um, you know, daily relationships or whatever it might be, you can also pray for your well being and the well being of others. But taking that time to really stay in a dedicated practice of a devotional ritual builds that spiritual channel and stamina inside yourself on a human level and notice what shifts in your daily life. So I'm going to give you a homework assignment. So your homework assignment is going to be to take, to, to create the devotional ritual, wherever it's going to take place in your home, find that space. It can be in a corner somewhere. It can be in a particular room that you like to be in, whatever it is, clear the space. And then once you've cleared that space and you've, and you, you've created it, you can create your altar. I'm calling it the altar. It can be whatever you want to call it, but it's the space where on it is your sacred. It's your sacred space. It's your sacred offerings. Again, it can be a candle, it can be pictures, it can be, um, you know, whatever, flowers, it can be whatever helps you feel that you can sit there and it has meaning for you to connect divinely to a higher power, to the universe in this way or to God. And then spend, spend time every morning there and it can be five minutes, it can be 10 minutes, it can be longer, but in it, you close your eyes and you offer up your prayers and your gratitude, anything else you want to, based on what I shared in this, in this episode, and then start to notice by the end of a week from that point, like by the following week, what might have shifted and start to track that more week by week, what has opened up for you? What have you, what, what has shifted in the area of prosperity and well-being after offering up in your devotional daily practice, your prayers and your connection and your gratitude, what, what shifts for you? So track that see how it, see how it goes. And, 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 and may you continue as long as you need to. It's, it was so fascinating to me that even talking to the owner of the place we stay, the retreat center, and she was sharing how, you know, it's, it's, it's a big commitment to be Balinese. You know, you have to do this every day. They commit to it every day. It's a way of life. And they're there, you step off the plane and you're in this space. And it is like, potent. It's a potent frequency in that area. And when we're living in a world where in some cases, and in my opinion, coming sometimes back from out of the country into the United States, it's a trauma energy. It's an intense energy here. Um, that, that being in a space that's prayerful and devotional in some way feels completely different. So how can we here doing our daily practice, cultivate that energy connection and that field of consciousness around you that can help you in your protection and in your safety and in your grounding and really in your own, um, own field, your own connection to source. 
that you can cultivate that and keep that present with you in your daily life. And it starts with these types of daily devotional rituals. So I hope this supports you and I hope you take this practice into your daily life and find that time and space to do it, to create your daily devotional ritual. And I look forward to connecting with you in our next episode.